Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're going to be talking about speed run vehicles. More specifically, we're going to be looking at the LiPo battery pack and what should we be looking out for when selecting one of these for our top speed run vehicle. I want to get a list there in the comment section going. Let me know what kind of battery you use, the cell count you use, the capacity and the C rating right there down below. Let's get started and talk about the first consideration that we must make when we're getting a LiPo battery pack for our radio control vehicle. Number one on our list is going to be the voltage, the cell count of our battery pack. This is important because we do have to match up the cell count with everything else in our power system. We have to make sure that our speed control and our motor are going to be well suited for the cell count that we plan and wish to use. Obviously having a higher voltage is going to give you the potential to draw more power and go faster with your setup. Typically guys are running between 4 and 8S, however you can go outside of this range too depending on what you're trying to achieve. Now typically in speed run vehicles there are two bays where you can place batteries inside of your vehicle. Now my suggestion is if you do plan on only using one bay and because you have to remove the other bay such as in the limitless V1 when you do the motor side swap this way if you're only going to have one bay my recommendation is to use only one battery pack and not have multiple battery packs placed in series. Getting rid of that series wiring harness is just going to give you a drop in resistance through the wire that you can now eliminate. Not a big deal, but if you have the opportunity, it's well worth it. Another consideration is that most people run two battery packs in the two different bays within their radio control vehicle, and typically they are doing this by running a battery that is 2S to 4S and placing that in series with the other battery pack to form a 4 to 8S LiPo battery. Whether you decide to do it that way or to take two battery packs and place them in parallel with one another, both options work. There is possibly a better choice between those two depending on what you're trying to do, especially if you're trying to maximize performance. We may get into this in another video. We'll see. Let's move on to the second item on our list that we have to select and this comes down to the capacity of our battery pack. The capacity of our battery pack is actually quite important. Now what is not important is how long we need to run our vehicles. Often enough, just having 2000 milliamp hour for most guys is going to be enough actual battery capacity to suit multiple different runs back to back. In fact, most guys probably want to just charge up to maximum voltage regardless of the capacity that they have on board and within their pack. Where we really get into the importance of capacity, it deals with the actual amount of power that we can pull out of that pack. We'll talk more about this right after we cover the C rating. This is number three on our list and the third item that you want to pay attention to is the C rating. But I do have to warn you, this is a parameter that we have to be extremely careful about. And that is because companies are claiming some significant and what would otherwise be impressive numbers when it comes to the C rating of a battery pack. Somewhere around 250 C or even higher being claimed on some of these batteries. And this is quite significant, especially if that pack is of a substantial capacity, over 8,000 milliamp hour or higher. When it comes to the C rating, what you want to do is get the highest that you possibly can because this is going to give you the most amount of performance out of those packs, but you also want to compare with other people on YouTube, on the forums, any resource that you wish to use to make sure that guys are saying this pack performs or they've tested under load what kind of voltage drop they are getting from those packs to give you that reassurance to know that you're getting a high performing pack. At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what the C rating label shows you. It matters what realistically you can actually get from that battery pack. Now, generally, the higher the marketed C rating, the better that pack should be performing. However, that's not always the case, and that's why I'm throwing that little warning tag out there for you guys. I want to bring us back to capacity because the capacity of a battery pack as well as the C rating of a battery pack ultimately determine the amount of power that we can pull from that battery, and this is what we use within our power system. You take the capacity of the battery and you divide it by a thousand. We want to represent the capacity in amp hours and when you multiply the amount of amp hours 
by the C rating. This is the maximum continuous amount of current that we can pull from our pack. Here's a quick example that we'll do. If you take a five amp hour battery pack, that would otherwise be a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and you have a pack that is of 10 C, you take the 10 C, you multiply it by the five, and you're gonna get 50 amps of maximum continuous discharge from this particular battery pack. Now, if the C rating was 20, you would take 20 and multiply it by five and you'd get a hundred for the maximum amount of current and amps that you can discharge from that battery pack. The same side of the equation, if you had a 10 C battery and you had 10,000 milliamp hour available to you, you would take those two values, you'd multiply them together and you would end up getting 100 amps continuous. Now when you take batteries and you start to put them in parallel with each other, the C rating of the battery is a constant and does not change. You're gonna get more power out of that pack as an overall system System because you have multiple packs being placed in parallel, thus driving up the capacity and giving us a higher amount of current output from those packs. This is why capacity is important to us because it really ultimately helps us with the performance of the pack where we really don't care about how long we can run our packs for. We can charge them up so we get maximum voltage, which is going to lead us to a higher top speed that our motor can thrive on. Now the final thing that we have to pay attention to is the size and the shape of the battery. We have to fit our battery packs in the bays that are allocated for those packs within a radio control vehicle. And this is where things start to get a little bit more complicated and complex. We're trying to maximize the amount of capacity, the C rating, as well as the cell count, and the, all of these things are going to increase the physical size of these packs. And as long as they get bigger, we're gonna run into some limitations here. So ideally what you wanna do is make sure that you're measuring the battery bay that you have available and making certain that your physical pack can fit in that space so that you can actually use it for your top speed runs. Now, a point that I want to make here that is not important for most speed run guys is the weight of that battery pack. Weight typically doesn't really matter so much for us because we have a ton of power that we're able to throw down at the wheels of our car and get that car up to top speed. And on the flip side, weight is actually part of what helps us get performance. Packs that have higher C ratings have more weight. Packs that have higher capacity have more weight. It is much better for us to accept this weight penalty and gain the amount of performance than to flip it up and reverse it where you're not gonna get the performance but you're gonna get a weight savings. Power is king here. The more power we have, the higher the top speed that we can achieve here. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. Don't forget to throw your packs that you use for your speed run vehicles in the comment section section below. Until the next time, keep those wheels on the ground, keep the magic smoke in the ESC, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.